What's up everybody? Adam Cook here, Nautical Pride Sport Fishing. Today, we are going to be talking about how to target catfish in the fall. I almost never leave out of this ramp anymore, but every time I do, I get a bunch of warm, fuzzy feelings because this ramp right here is what I grew up on. This is what cut my teeth on the river. I grew up about five minutes from here, just about my entire childhood. It isn't the nicest ramp. It isn't. But it's just something nostalgic about it that just really, really, really takes me back. So I feel good this morning. Y'all stay tuned. tell you everything that you need to know whether they're deep or they're shallow now as we start getting towards the cooler months theoretically most of those shad those gizzard shad uh, other bait fish they're gonna go deep or they're gonna push up into these creeks or into these tidal pools that we have out here in tidal rivers now granted you're always gonna have a small percentage of fish that I like to call boner fish probably about 15 20 percent of the population it's always going to be shallow, you're always going to have some deep, you're always going to have some kind of fish on structure. But, those aren't the fish that we're targeting today. The fish we're targeting are the mass populations of fish that school and migrate together during the fall transition. But first things first, we got to find some bait, then go mark some fish and set up them. got a nice little eight nine inch this is a really good size shad Come here. this is a perfect size absolute live size cut size whatever you want to do with it so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the backbone out why I like to do that you can see we open that up all that blood just right there See, I change my baits pretty often, every 30, 40 minutes, so I'm not worried about them getting washed out all that quick. I want as much scent in the water as I possibly can, because at the end of the day, that's what these fish are, scent hunters. So I'm going to come right here behind the gill plate, and on one like this, you know, he's kind of small, I'm going to come right there at the back of the tail. Yeah. 
Beautiful fish. It's one of the things that I really enjoy about shallow water fishing is how hard and how aggressive these fish hit. When you fish shallow water a lot of times, these fish don't typically live in these conditions year round. But when they're in these conditions, they're here to feed. And when they hit it, you know it. blowed up on the surface. <laughs> I think I got this rod getting ready to go down too. Looks like he's swimming with it. Another good little fish. I don't care how big they are or how small they are. When you pick up these fish in that shallow water, it's a blast. They feel 80 pounds. It doesn't matter what they are. Beautiful fish, beautiful fish. This is probably the biggest of the day. He's probably low 40s. Whew, he's thick. Go ahead and get him back. Coming right up. Another beautiful fish. One's a little bit smaller, but super solid. I mean, he took off of that thing like a freight train. The wind's not really starting to jive of us right. I have to get out here so we can get set up a little bit better. It's hard to leave fish though to go find some new fish, but it's like that sometimes. All right guys, so I said that we were gonna talk a little bit about bait. Now. Fall time is one of those times of the year where these fish, they really start gorging out. The metabolism slows down, but they're still feeding heavy because they know them cooler months are coming and they got to get ready for it. You know, these fish aren't really smart, but they know how to survive. Once you get into about this time of year, the fry of this year is about this size. There's millions, you can't even put a number on how many of them are in the water. So one of the things that I find this time of year that shows me a lot of success is to downsize my bait and to match the hatch. You know, the old saying, big bait, big fish. And all that is good. But if you can throw what these fish are actually keyed in on, you're gonna greatly increase your chances at success. So if you think about a fish that's been eating heavy, you know, got a big old belly on him, a lot of times he don't have room for that 16 inch gizzard shad. Not that he won't eat him if opportunity permits, but those smaller fish those smaller bait fish, a lot of times, is what I feel like those fish really key in on. Not only for the reason that they're an easy target, but a lot of times, that's all they got room for. They're stuffed, they're huge, their bellies are all bowed out. And at the end of the day, elephants like peanuts too. Oh, 
know. He's either coming right back to us or he's small. Can't tell if he's really small or he's just running right to us. Oh yeah, he's got some weight to him. <laughs> Big old bull. Oh, yeah. There he is. Man, they are just covered in mud today. There you go. Woo! That's a real one. This is the one that you write home about. <laughs> oh man, what an absolute beautiful fish. Whew. He's got some mud on him too. Whew. Man, just an outstanding day. These fish, they're hungry. It's, it's been an off month, guys. It's been a really tough month with these warmer conditions. But this cool spike that we've had the last two weeks, I knew it was just a matter of time them fish were gonna respond. <sighs> Man, great fish. A good fish right here. He's got some weight to him. Oh. Good one right there, guys. Beautiful dark color. I think he's quite as big as the last one. That one's getting hit too. <laughs> 